Barbara Walters. And John Stossel's Give Me a Break. Tonight, a town's sinister secret. A scoutmaster accused of molesting boys in his troop for more than two decades. He just kept on insisting. He said that, you know, just lay back and everything will be okay. Trusted by parents to protect and care for their children. Did his manipulation lead this young victim to murder his whole family? He was training me emotionally to be an assassin. No one suspected him, but police say he abused more than 50 boys. How did he get away with it? Perry Peltz with the unbelievable story of a scout leader who held an entire town under a spell. From Times Square in New York, Barbara Walters. Good evening, and welcome to 2020 Friday. How well do you know the neighbors your children see every day, especially the ones they trust? Well, we ask because tonight we're going to tell you about a neighbor who is a secret predator, molesting and frightening young boys in a small town, perhaps for decades. How could a whole town not know what was going on? And why did the victim, so young and vulnerable, take a vow of silence to protect him? Perry Peltz tells us about this perverted Pied Piper. And watching this story, you may understand for the first time how child molesters are able to get away with it. Lone Oak, Arkansas is just off the interstate. It's a one-stop light town where kids play baseball go camping, and enjoy a peaceful childhood. Unless they were in Boy Scout Pack 103. That's where authorities say a dark secret of sexual abuse has been kept for 30 years, causing anguish, torment, and some say even murder. We'd get around the campfire, and uh, we'd all get drunk. And that's usually where the, the sexual part came in. But he would come to us after everybody had gone back, you know, from the fire or whatever, and had a little bit to drink, and he'd uh, come to your tent. He just kept on insisting. So it happened right out there in the middle of nowhere. And he said, that, you know, just lay back, and I'll re relieve you of some stress, and everything will be OK. In the seclusion of the woods, 22-year scout veteran Jack Walls, leader of Pack 103, would turn Boy Scouts into victims. A pedophile who sexually assaulted children in his charge. He would handpick his favorites from the scouts and the neighborhood and bring them deep into the desolate forest. Next, he would abuse his position of authority, exploiting the boys' trust in him, plying them with alcohol and pornography. He offered boys like this one who is still too ashamed to reveal his identity entry into a world of the forbidden. He had told me that that was just an initiation into a, uh, a new elitist club that was an immediate unlimited access to alcohol, cigarettes, cigars. A little did I know that the initiation would take place over and over and over and over again. And at those so-called initiations, Jack Walls would play on his victim's shame and embarrassment. And for victims like Josh Aukus, if a secret so dark were to get out in a town so small, that would spell emotional ruin. I was just embarrassed about it, you know. I couldn't tell anything like that. that the whole town would know you yeah. wouldn't have any friends, couldn't play football or, you know, just be harassed. Every, that's the way I pictured it. Jack Wall's private life is even more shocking in light of his public image. Walls was a pillar of society, a family man with a wife and three daughters, the son of prominent lawyers and judges. He was even awarded Lone Oak's Man of the Year. And that's why it was nearly impossible to stop him. But in 1992, Boy Scout Doug Hogan would be the first to try. At that time, investigators believe Walls had already been molesting boys for two decades. He approached me and re requested that I perform a sexual act. And what did you say to him? I refused. 
And how did he take that refusal? He was furious. I knew he had a gun out there that night. It made it threatening. I don't think he ever went to sleep. He was up pacing all night long. Scared for his life, Doug Hogan left the campsite at dawn and went home to tell his father. He pressed charges, landing Jack Walls in court. But at trial, Doug met the strongest resistance from his fellow scouts, who felt so afraid and then so protected and loved by Walls, they would never tell the secret. He had so many of uh, us and actually testify for him that nothing like this ever happened or nothing like this ever would happen. I got on the stand for him and uh, took his side and I did everything I could to keep Jack from getting in trouble. Jack Walls did not get in trouble. His trial lasted just three hours. Walls was acquitted. Ironically, it was Doug Hogan who became the town pariah. He was the enemy. I mean, he, he told on Jack, and he didn't do that. The Boy Scouts organization responded to Doug's complaints and quickly threw Walls out. But dismissal was not enough to stop him. Jack Walls continued his sinister ways by forming his own personally selected elite group, using his family farm for private weekend outings. We were going out there and getting drunk and, and uh, all the sex was going on and Jack was raping boys. Keith Stocks, who became a scout at age eight and a victim three years later, was by all accounts Jack Walls' favorite. Keith says Walls knew how to manipulate his victims, turning each one against his peers and his family and making them feel all alone in the world, all alone that is, except for Jack Walls. Everything's focused on him. There's nobody else but him. He's the source of everything. Love, support, everything we thought we needed. But what Jack Walls was providing gradually sent many boys into a downward spiral of self-hate and depression. I, I thought there was something wrong with him. I just felt like I was nothing. And really, I didn't care. I, my grades dropped bad. Uh, I made, I started um, making D's and F's. And we tried different things and nothing seemed to work. Vicki Aukis is Josh's mother. And he just seemed to be slipping deeper and deeper into depression and um, his anger. He, he had such um, outbursts of anger. And a lot of it was toward me. Ironically, Walls became a hero for alarmed parents who encouraged their troubled teenage boys to spend even more time with him. The Augustes, who live across the street from Walls, hoped he could alleviate what they thought were the routine problems of adolescence. Terry Augustes is Josh's father. And when we had trouble with Josh drinking, I told Jack and he said, I'll check into it for you. He goes, I, I can talk to Josh. Jack was always there, no matter what. He doted over these boys. The Knoxes lived next door to Jack Walls. Their son, Wade, was not only a member of his elite group, he is also Jack Walls' nephew. Jack was in our house at least once or twice a day. He knew our morals. He knew our standards. He knew that we thought our children were gifts of God. But Karen's illusions about Walls soon vanished. What appeared to be paternal love was actually part of the manipulation he apparently used to keep the boys silent. Jack had dug a, a hole, a grave, and that he had told my son that if he ever told anybody, he or one of his friends would end up in that grave. More powerful than fear was the way some boys were manipulated by the dangerous attention that Walls lavished on them. I don't know that I really thought it was wrong when I was younger because uh, I wanted to be loved so much that uh, I was willing to do anything to get it. You know, uh, How important did Jack Walls become to you, Heath? I called him dad. He called me son. He's the source of everything. Love, support, and was just pride and joy. I was his finest.
In order to keep Jack Wall secret, some boys lied on the stand, others took vows of silence. But Heath would raise the stakes even higher in what he perceived as the ultimate test of loyalty. For years, I've done exactly what he told me that He was training me emotionally to be an assassin. When Heath's mother finally began to suspect that Jack Walls had been molesting her son for 10 years, Heath says his life began to unravel. I know she got the gist of what was going on. Uh, I'd went back and talked to Jack about it, which was uh, the worst mistake I've ever made in my life. Heath says Walls became enraged that the secret he had managed to keep for so long might get out. Heath believed he needed to redeem himself not only to protect Wall's cover, but more importantly, to maintain Wall's affection. On the other hand, I thought I was going to lose him. I didn't know how to react to that and what to do about that. And now I've betrayed him. Now I've, uh, I've caused him problems. He says he felt he had to act quickly to preserve the world that Walls had built for him. Jack had a saying. If you have a problem and you can't solve it, you kill it. And so I took his last command. What was the last command, Heath? Kill the problem. I caused the problem. Fix the problem. Kill it. Just a few weeks later, after a family meal, Heath recalls being consumed by an uncontrollable rage. Went to a gun cabinet. I got the 45 other gun cabinet. As soon as I saw my daddy, everything snapped. Heath says he doesn't remember much else, but when it was over, Heath had murdered his mother, father, and sister. All he says to protect the man, he called dad. People should know what happened the whole time. Not just what happened on that night. What we all went through. What, uh, what Jack did to it was you who pulled the trigger. Why is this Jack Wall's fault? I don't blame Jack for me killing my family. I blame Jack for what he did to me. It caused me to kill my family. Heath Stocks was sent to prison for triple murder. And incredibly, even at his own trial, he says out of loyalty, he never said a word about Jack Walls. His secret would remain over Lowenoke for another year until one boy's love for his family would finally undo the 30-year curse of Jack Walls. He doesn't know it yet, but Jack Walls is about to be cornered by his victims. Perry Peltz will be back in a moment with the astounding conclusion to this story. <laughs> Bold step. The outcome uncertain. I looked down and he had a gun. What will it take to stop Jack Walls? How will the spell be broken when 2020 continues?